Ever wonder how Hilo River Healthcare provides support to our children in our community schools? Well, if so, come with me today as we take a deeper look into our schoolhouse services program. So let's go. So hey everyone, so now I'm with um, Candy, our Schoolhouse Services Director, and I'm going to have her introduce herself. Hi, my name is Candy Braby. I am the Schoolhouse Services Director. I grew up in the Hill Crossing Village in District 6, and I received my Bachelor's of Science degree from ASU, and I've been a registered nurse for 30 years. So Candy, glad to be here with you today. Uh, for people who don't know, um, can you touch on the Schoolhouse Services mission? Sure. Um, School Health Services mission is to support our students in their health care needs while they are at school so that they can achieve their educational goals and live healthy lives. In 1998, the Hilla River Indian Community began an initiative and with the support of leadership provided a grant called the Tobacco Tax Grant and it provided um, school nurses and health educators in each of the schools that we represent. So Candy, one of the interesting aspects about the program is that you guys serve as you know, District 1 all the way to District 7. So what schools are our nurses in? Our nurses are at Blackwater Community School, Sacaton Elementary School, Sacaton Middle School, Casablanca Community School, St. Peter's Indian Mission Catholic School, Hill Crossing Elementary School, Hill Crossing Middle School, Maricopa Village Christian School. We're at the Head Starts D3. D4, D5, and D6, and the Early Education Child Care Center. You guys are everywhere, huh? <laughs> yes, we are. We also work with the Hill River Indian Tribal Health Department and the student resource officers. We just you know, collaborate with a lot of the community departments as well. So Candy, because we're a community-based program, like what does that mean? We provide coordinated health care, which means we um, one of our unique opportunities is we have here in the community is to connect our students with the providers at Hilla River Healthcare and we have some terrific providers. So Candy, you know, you're the director of the department and also your community member. Maybe tell us uh, what does that mean to you and how does that impact your position? Yes, you know, it's, you know, it's very special. Um, I feel very honored to be able to serve in this community that I grew up in. And, you know, I, I just love the role of what we're doing here in Schoolhouse Services. Um, again, like I said before, we want to have a Schoolhouse Service team that is going to meet the needs of the community, that meet the needs of the families and the students, and to have caring and compassionate nurses. That is my main goal. Um, as well as, you know, making a difference in these children's lives. As, as school nurses, we, we develop a relationship with the students and really have that close relationship. So I remember the first graduation I went to after being a middle school and a high school nurse, because I know those students, I know the challenges they had the whole year, and then to see them graduate was just like such a great feeling that you made a difference. Well, Candy, that was some great information, and you know, we want to thank you for your time and your service. All right, I'll see you. Thank you, Mario. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Frances Vieskis, and I'm the program coordinator for school health services here at Gila River Healthcare. Well, Frances, good to see you and good to be here. Maybe as a, as a program coordinator, what does that mean? And tell us a little bit more about your title. Thank you, Mario. Um, well, my position as a program coordinator is I um, assist my director, Candy, and I assist the department as well with all in collaboration of what um, healthcare needs that are need to be to do for our children out in the schools. Telling us about the makeup of the team. In the community is that we have a nurse at every school. That's our goal, that's our mission, is to make sure that's where we provide that quality of health care for our children. And that's what community wants. Community supports this. And so we make sure that there is a nurse at every school as best as we can. And um, by that also, we also have Head Starts. And we also support the Head Starts. And we also are, we work very hard to make sure that there's a nurse at every at the, all the Head Starts as well. And then we also have within the community with all our schools
school nurses on our school clinics, we also have a health educator that comes out. We have three health educators. So Francis, it seems like it's a really exciting time for education in the community. Maybe touch on uh, some of the newer schools that we're gonna see today. So it is an exciting time. We have new schools in the community, beautiful schools. We have one right now where we're in, Blackwater, who has a brand new school. Our children get to have that and they deserve this, you know, especially during the time that, that they've gone through. They deserve to be able to come back in this brand new school and be able to help with whatever issues or health issues or concerns that have been going on. So Francis, you know, uh, being a tenured employee with us, you know, you've seen this program grow quite a bit. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences? I love to serve the family and communities here and um, just to being able to be part of their lives. And it's not just being part of their lives, it's a journey. It's a journey and walking and being able to um, be there to support each other and to submit and support the school the whole aspect of what our program does it's you know there are many communities out there that are trying to get to where we're at already and so watching it grow throughout the years has been um, it's only getting better it's only getting better and um, seeing the support from council seeing the support with our board seeing the support with our leadership and seeing the value of what our department's about it shows the commitment to our children because our children are our future well francis that was some uh, great information and we yes. thank you for your services we'll thank see you. you see ya everybody, my name is Christiane Ontiveros and I'm one of the Head Start nurses. Um, we're currently at the Sacaton Head Start and um, I was wanted to tell you a little bit about, about what we do. So a part of our big job is that aside from the usual things that we you know, we take care of sick children, you know, um, or any uh, emergency needs or anything like that, we do a lot of case management. So part of our case management, we follow up with um, well child exams, we do um, check up on immunizations, we do a lot of of uh, labs that we have to follow up on. So, Mario, I wanted to show you a little bit of what we do when we do screenings and how we set up. So, uh, if you want to join me, we'll go into the classroom and uh, we'll show you what it's all about. All right, Mario, so as you can see, this is our, our part of some of our screening equipment. Um, like we said, we do our height and weights for the children if they're able to stand. And then we also have a hearing machine here. So this is an auto acoustic emission machine. So basically all this fancy word basically means is that this little machine gets connected to the side of the ear and then it transmits sound into the ear. And then, then the ear then reflects back those uh, waves into the machine. And then this allows us to know if the ear is able to do its job or not. So, um, so hearing is very, very important for us. Our screening is because um, our children are still learning how to talk and speak. And so if they can't hear well, then it really affects their speech a lot. And then along with uh, with hearing, vision is huge. So our little babies, so you know what, like we usually, for our little ones that are able to know their shapes or how to uh, match, we'll do this little like um, matching game where we do like a little chart and we kind of tell the kids, okay, tell me what you see and stuff like that, like the normal vision um, exams that we do as adults, but we just do it with shapes. So, but with our little ones that don't know them, like for zero to three years of age, we do a lot of, of our, our eye health. And so with our eye health, we do like check their red reflex, we check their pupils, see if they can um, if they can trace well. So as you know, vision is very, very important for our, our kids that are in school because 80% of learning is, is, is done by eyes. So like if they can't see, then it's actually affecting a lot of their learning. So vision screenings is huge for us school nurses. So that is what we do. After the screening's done, like how's that information communicated back to the healthcare system? The great thing about it is that since we work for Hiller Healthcare, um, our pediatricians can actually go into our notes that we do for school health, and they can actually see if the child has passed or not, or did not pass a screening. So they can then follow up with a like referral to an audiologist if needed, because usually if our children do not um, pass their vision screenings, then we automatically send them to the eye clinic to get followed up on. So this helps us identify any students that may need further follow up, or helps us continue. Um, making sure these children continue to be healthy. Um, so a big part of Head Start is to make sure that these children are ready and they're ready for kindergarten and they're ready to succeed in life. Good morning, my name is Chelsea Hadley. I am a health educator for School Health Services and I've been with GRHC for two years. 
As a health educator, maybe can you tell us what does that mean and what do you do? Yeah, so being a health educator here at GRHC, we um, do health education and with that we promote um, health, wellness, and safety for the kids. There are three health educators within the school health services and I cover one, two, and three districts and one other health educator does four and five and then the third health educator does six and seven. Maybe talk a little bit about your experience and how's that going? I really like being the health educator here because you know I build relationships with the children um, and also it can go into building relationships with the family. So we've talked about COVID safety measures, um, the appropriate way to wash your hands, um, you know, mouth and dental hygiene. We talked about bullying. We talked about self-esteem. Um, you know, anything related to health, we we can definitely do it for the kids in the schools. Yeah. So you know, educating the kids about um, health issues. You know, being aware of their own health before um, a condition or issue actually happens. So for instance, we could talk to the kids about, you know, dental hygiene and you know why they brush their teeth, um, when they should brush their teeth so that they're preventing a cavity before um, it happens. So Chelsea is a team member at, at Gila River Healthcare. Mm -hmm. Like what has attracted you to your current position? So I worked at the Gila River um, Boys and Girls Club. So, you know, I really grew with the kids there and I really wanted to get into the preventative aspect as, you know, talking to them every day and seeing them every day and just seeing them grow up. So I applied at School Health Services and I got the, you know, I got the job and I was able to see the kids and because I can see the kids, you know, I build that relationship with them where they remember me and who I am. Um, they always like, asking me, you know, why, why are you in our classroom? They're curious and the kids are, you know, they're smart. So if we're able to talk to the kids at a young age to be aware about their health. Um, that's where, you know, in some sense, I'm like hugging a little bit of my inner child because I'm Native American and talking to the Native American kids and letting them know about their awareness. It actually um, makes me feel like I give a little bit of peace to me as so their knowledge because they are the next generation of this um, society. Well, Chelsea, thank you for your time and thank you for all your services. We'll see you. Yeah, thank you, Mario. Hi, everybody. My name is Melissa Grentz. I'm one of the nurses with School Health Services, and we're here today in the nurse's office at Casablanca Community School. So welcome in. So, so Melissa, can you talk about, uh, as, a, as a nurse in the school setting, um, like what are some of your services you provide? Sure, absolutely. So some of the services that we provide here at the schools, we do um, anything from health promotion and preventative measures all the way up to emergency care. So we're kind of set for everything here. So another service we offer is um, immunization surveillance for our children. And we also offer um, every year we do flu clinics at the schools. So the children can come and get their flu clinic, or the, excuse me, they can come get their flu shot from us. Their parents can come, staff members, if they're community members, they can come partake in that as well. So it's really nice that the school's kind of a satellite and everything can be done from here. So Mario, one of the benefits of um, being a school health nurse with Healer River Healthcare is that when we send our children to the vision clinics and to the hearing clinics, to get their services, they're getting services from a Gila River Healthcare specialist, and then we're able to follow that referral all the way through to treatment. So it's very nice to see, um, you know, the full circle of care. Could you touch on consents and also some of the equipment you have in the nurse's office? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we send out consents every year in the spring, so about this time to get started for next year. So this is actually next year's school consent. It allows us to be able to see the children here at school and it allows us to um, provide them those services of the eye clinic 
the hearing clinic um, behavioral health school counselors. So um, this is something that we have with all of our children. And you can see in our big cabinet that that is every children, every child in school has a chart that we can reference to be sure that we have the proper consent to give prescription medication or to give over-the-counter medication and that we can get them those services as well. So making sure that we have that in place um, is definitely a priority for us. This okay. is something that we use to be able to take the children's vital signs. Mm -hmm. So it's a very nice um, unit that has everything together. So we can do temperature, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, this little gadget is for the pulse ox. Mm. So we can tell their oxygen rate for, um, which is super important for students who may have asthma, need to come in for their inhaler or to get a breathing treatment. Then we can monitor them and see if they're improving and if they're not improving, um, we can see those trends of those vital signs and then get them to a higher level of care. Then also we have our emergency equipment. We also have an AED in every school. So this is just like they have in the hospitals and in the ambulance. So um, this would be up in the front office. So everybody knows where it's at, but we do have it available. And then we also have our emergency bag, which has equipment like um, dressings. We have, um, there's an Ambu bag in here in the event that there was a emergent respiratory um, problem. So we have all kinds of things, more blood pressure cuffs, and then we also have our EpiPens. So our EpiPens are important to have at school because children can have life-threatening allergies mm -hmm. to things that we find every day and that we find at school. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, if a child is going to have a first time allergic reaction, it occurs at school. So we want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So we have EpiPens for the smaller kids and then EpiPens for the larger children, mm -hmm. older children and adults. So would you like to learn how to use one of these? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> All right, so these are trainers, okay. okay? And they do say trainer on them. There's no needle in these, but um, things that children could be allergic to at school might be um, something they might find in their lunch, maybe wheat, eggs, peanuts. Um, they could also be allergic to things outdoors, such as insects. Um, bees are a big thing that children and adults can be allergic to. So to use this, um, this is an emergency medication, and it's the only thing that will stop an anaphylactic reaction or the most severe type of allergic reaction. Okay. So if we use this, we're going to call 911 and get the ambulance here because we want them to continue on to a further level of care for sure. So to use this, you wanna hold it like you're making a fist. Mm -hmm. This is our safety cap. So we're gonna remove this mm -hmm. and this needle that's not in here on this one, because remember it's a trainer. Okay. This go is meant to go through our clothes, okay? Okay. So we're gonna give it right where our hand naturally would fall and you wanna hear a loud click. So ready? One, two, three. Out. One, two, three. And then we would take it out. Our needle's covered. Yeah. And then we're gonna rub the leg and set our student down or lay them down. And now you're prepared to save a life. Great. And this is what we um, provide for our 500 or so teachers and staff in the district every year. So everybody in all the school buildings are prepared to save a life as well. Melissa, that was some great information. So it sounds like you're 100% you're prepared to provide that routine care that children need and also uh, be ready for you know, any emergency if needed. So thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And you have a good one. Absolutely. You too, Mario. Thank you. Thanks. So I want to give a big thanks to our Schoolhouse Services team and their continued support. And also I want to thank the support of our community schools that allowed for this video to happen today. So if you haven't yet already, check out our YouTube channel uh, and you can subscribe to find more videos as well. So until next time, have a great day.